Hello, my name is Mauricio Sulaiman. Welcome to the WBC Boxcast, the WBC podcast uh, that uh, we have initiated as a way to be close to the boxing fans from around the world. This week, I would like to discuss a topic which is very interesting, uh, the great rivalry between Mexico and Puerto Rico, because Canelo is going to be fighting Edgar Berlanga this Saturday night at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Uh, this is going to be the 43rd fight between Mexico and Puerto Rico in WBC championship fights. Uh, Mexico is uh, ahead 22 against 18 and one no contest. But those 41 fights, uh, I can tell you, have been absolutely dramatic. There's a great rivalry between both countries because both Puerto Ricans and Mexicans really have hot blood and boxing is a national sport. There's too much drama, too much pride. And when Mexico and Puerto Rico is inside the ring, it's a guarantee that it's gonna be a sensational fight uh, with no backing back or backing down or going back at, at all. It all began in 1966. Uh, legendary Carlos Ortiz defeated twice uh, legendary Ultiminio Ramos. That's how the rivalry between Mexico and Puerto Rico began. Uh, there were two fights. Uh, he took the title away from him, then defended the title. And that led to a very large amount of uh, specific rivalries. I would say the first one that was of great importance was Wilfredo Gomez. He was a sensational super bantamweight champion, uh, 20 defenses of the title. Uh, he defeated many Mexican fighters. But that one fight, which really made people uh, angry from Mexico and very happy from Puerto Rico, was when he knocked out undefeated Carlos Zarate. Zarate was the WBC bantamweight champion, moving up to super bantamweight, only to be knocked out in four rounds in Puerto Rico in a dramatic fight. From there, Salvador Sanchez came into the picture he became world champion, and eventually Wilfredo Gomez from super bantamweight moved up to featherweight to challenge Salvador Sanchez. Uh, Gomez had 44 wins, 44 by knockout, and he was a heavy favorite on that fight to defeat Sanchez. But that uh, unbelievable night, 1982, Salvador Sanchez knocked out Gomez in the eighth round. He dropped him in the first, punished him for eight rounds, and finally uh, the legendary uh, Carlos Padilla, the referee, waved the fight off and the fight is over. Mexico had found its revenge in that fight. Uh, there were other rivalries. Uh, Jose Luis Ramirez uh, lost to Chapo Rosario, Edwin Rosario. Then in the rematch, it was a dramatic turn uh, Ramirez was down four times, and then he came back and knocked out Rosario in the fourth round. That same Rosario uh, reconquered the title, uh, became even known as the pound per pound number one fighter in the world in the era when Mike Tyson was the heavyweight champion. Uh, and then Julio Cesar Chavez moved up from super featherweight to lightweight. Uh, it was the Hilton Hotel. I was there. It was unbelievable. Cold night in November. And uh, Julio Cesar Chavez was not the favorite. Rosario was the fan favorite, the odds favorite. Chavez went in. They fought toe-to-toe -to -toe for 11 rounds when finally Richard Steele had enough, stopped the fight, and Chavez became the world champion in the lightweight division. Uh, while, that's, while this was happening, uh, Hector Macho Camacho was already in the scene. Camacho knocked out Bazooka Limon. He knocked out a few other Mexican fighters. And he was making a name of himself and with his flamboyant style, 
was creating a lot of fans and a lot of enemies. He kept shouting at Julio Cesar Chavez, challenging him to get into the ring with him while he was beating other Mexican fighters, including Jose Luis Ramirez. On his own, Chavez was beating Laporte, Sammy Fuentes, Pelayito Hernandez, Rosario. So it became building uh, a huge, huge fight that the fans wanted to see. And it took eight years for Don King to put it together. Finally, at the Thomas and Max Center, 1992, precisely on this weekend of uh, Mexican independence, they met at the Thomas and Max Center. Julio Cesar Chavez gave him a beating for 12 rounds. Macho was very macho, and he sustained and stayed in the fight and lost a uh, easy, lopsided decision, but in a great, great atmosphere in that fight. Um, the next uh, rivalry came up uh, with uh, Oscar de la Hoya. He has absolute Mexican roots. He's a Mexican fighter, Mexican-American, and Tito Trinidad. Uh, de la Hoya defeated Macho Camacho, defeated a couple of other Puerto Rican fighters. Tito Trinidad beat Jory Boy Campas, beat a few other Mexican fighters, and then they met. A battle of champions. Welterweight division, undefeated fighters, and Tito Trinidad won a controversial close decision but that created another uproar between Mexico and Puerto Rico. Lastly, I would say the last uh, rivalry was uh, about 10 years ago, precisely nine years ago, when uh, the current champion, Saul Canelo Alvarez, faced Miguel Cotto for the WBC Middleweight Championship. It was then that uh, Canelo came back after being defeated by Floyd Mayweather, moving up from super welter to middleweight, and he came back with a absolute great fight against Miguel Cotto, who was a champion, who is a legend of the ring, and ended up in a very good, close fight won by Canelo. This time, we have Canelo Alvarez fighting Berlanga, a young, hungry, heavy-handed Puerto Rican he won his first 15 bouts by first round knockout. And he's regarded as a very powerful fighter. And Canelo, we will see if he still has the wisdom, the intelligence, the strength to overcome a hungry, powerful young kid who is fighting for what he has. It's gonna be a tremendous fight. Uh, don't miss it. It's gonna be on the great uh, Prime, Amazon Prime, Prime Video Network, live in Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena, 14th of September, Mexican Independence, Mexico against Puerto Rico, presented by Premier Boxing. I wish you a great week. Enjoy it, and don't miss this Saturday night. It's going to be a tremendous fight, and who will see who will win, Puerto Rico or Mexico, Mexico or Puerto Rico. My name is Mauricio Sulaiman. Thank you, Pepe Sulaiman, for being on the other side of the camera. And I'll see you in the next podcast. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.